Continuing our journey around the divisions, we are going to be doing yet another Locked On MLB division preview. Guess what? We are going to have a little bit of East Coast bias. Shield your eyes, shield your ears. We're talking about the American League East. This is Locked On MLB. You are Locked On MLB. Your daily MLB podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello, baseball fans. Welcome to Locked On MLB, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. This is the daily podcast. We talk about all of Major League Baseball. I am your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. If you don't believe me, there's my lower third. Feel free to call me Sully. I am an Emmy-nominated television producer who is beginning his fifth full season here at the Locked On Podcast. Now, where's your team every day? Follow us at Locked On MLB Pods on Twitter or on Instagram. You can follow me. I'm your pal, Sully. I'm at Sully Baseball on Twitter, Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. Hey, uh, we are doing yet another one of our uh, divisional previews. We're going to be bringing on all the hosts. We have a couple of our hosts have been our stalwarts of the Locked On Podcast Networks. And we have a brand new face as well to introduce. And this is going to be for the American League East, which in many ways is one of the most intriguing divisions because, well, four of the five teams have finished last year with a winning record. And the fifth team got to within two games of the World Series just two years ago. This should be a super tight division although I think there are a couple of front runners in here. But let's start with the team that didn't finish with a winning record, my beloved Boston Red Sox, and the show is hosted by Lauren Will- Lauren Wyland. It's your new name. I'm still getting used to your new name. I'm sorry. Me too. Lockdown you and me Red too. Sox. <laughs> Sully. I've known you for years, and now you have a new name. That just uh, strikes me as, uh, as interesting. Oh, new year, new me, as the kids say. Well, isn't it weird that the Red Sox, we don't know who's on the Red Sox anymore. We got to learn their names. I got to learn your name, too. So and some of these guys on the opening day roster might not even be with the the Red Sox come May and June. So you're going to have more names to learn and more names to forget. All right. Well, there you go. Thank goodness for the Celtics. Uh, The team, they surprised a lot by having a winning record last year. Some of those young players came and they flourished. Connor Newcomb of Locked On Orioles is here. How you doing, pal? It's uh, it was fun to watch a winning baseball team last year. Hoping to to see it happen again because Sully, you mentioned five years with the network. Um, I've been three, and those first two, Sully, they weren't fun. They weren't very tough, fun. <laughs> tough. Lots of talk about. It. Remember Al Bumbry? Uh, you know, a lot, a lot of a lot of pulling back to the past. But hey. One team that was a mash unit. In fact, at one point, two-thirds of their roster were in full body casts, and yet still they made the postseason. Kevin Weiss is here from Locked on Rays. Welcome aboard, and look out for that fan right behind you, right above you. I don't want you to get hurt. Yeah, there we go. I appreciate it, Sully, and and hopefully the Rays can uh, score more than one run in the playoffs if they get there again this year. I nearly tied them. Yeah. You know, I knew that their run production that was one better than me and their pitching was tremendous, you know, in the postseason. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. Remember, they're only a, uh, a couple of years removed from a pennant and a 100 win season. Hey, but who did win the division last year? Why, that would be the New York Yankees and the person who dragged me into the locked on podcast world. Someone I've known for a long time. The fantastic Always wonderful. Stacy Gotsouli is the host of Locked on Yankees. I listen to your show no matter what. And uh, they had a very interesting, good, solid year last year. Yes, very surprising. Yes, because last year we all, the ones who are here, Ulysses was here in Kevin's spot, but we most of us picked the Blue Jays to win last year. So that was kind of surprising, yeah. <laughs> well, it's with my great pleasure to say that we have a brand new, the brand new face here in the Lockdown Podcast Network. In fact, he still has that fresh out of the box host smell that just sort of comes right out. From north of the border, Craig Ballard, our new host of Locked On Blue Jays. Welcome aboard. 
Thank you so much. And and, and real quick, Kevin, um, I'm part of a fan base whose team scored nine runs in the in the playoffs. Where they're in the playoff game, they were eliminated. So scoring the runs not always what it's cracked up to be, Kevin. Just just to, just to commiserate with you there, brother. Hey, uh, let's start with the champs. Uh, Stacy Gotsoulias, uh, host of Lockdown Yankees. So tell me your thoughts a little bit on how last year's regular season turned out and thoughts going into 2023. I think the wild card for the Yankees was Nestor Cortez because mm-hmm. no one expected him to do what he did. And, you know, if I'm being real here, he was the ace last year. No offense to Garrett Cole, but Nestor Cortez was the guy that carried the Yankees on his back, especially in the first half. And like you said, they built up such a big lead that they had their worst August since 1991 and still ended up winning the division by seven games. That's how well they did in the first half. Um, Pleasantly surprised, completely shocked. Although when everyone was saying, oh, you know, they could beat the 98 Yankees for best record, I knew they weren't going to. And I said it on my show all the time. (laughs) And my ex-co-host, Abby, always laughed at me because I said, no, the other shoe is going to drop. I know it's this isn't going to stay like this the whole season. I knew I've watched them long enough. I knew it was too good to be true. But I would take, as you said, how it ended regular season. Yes, I would take it every day and twice on Sundays. I'm very happy with it. I think there are two other factors from that first half that weren't there in the second half. Clay Holmes uh, mm. did his best Mariano Rivera impersonation for the first half of the season. And I think most people thought he was going to be a nice setup man or some bullpen depth. It wasn't like a total out of the blue situation, but nobody expected him to be an all-star closer for the first half. And he certainly wasn't the second half. Mm-mm. And I think the yeah. other thing was Michael King, uh, for the first half of the season, also could have made the all-star team as a setup man. And I think those two were such a dynamic one-two punch in their in the bullpen that it allowed them to phase out Chapman. And I think when you lost King and Holmes, you know, the, turned back into a pumpkin. Uh, oh, the kryptonite affected him because he looks like Superman to me. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's a good-looking dude. There's no getting around it. Um <laughs> And I actually think going into this year, the kryptonite for the Yankees, uh, I, I don't trust their bullpen as much. I don't either. We don't even know who's going to close. Right. <laughs> because I don't trust Clay Holmes to, clo- to close. Like you said, first half, he was unbelievable. But second half, hmm, he pitched more like you kind of expected him to. And it right. could be a closer by committee. You know, they could test some guys out in the closing role. Um, they could put Oswaldo Cabrera in there because they're trying him in every position or maybe Isaiah Kiner Falefa because they're also trying him in every position. So why not try them as closer? Why not? Um, but I think out of all the aspects of the team, yes, the bullpen, I'm, I'm worried about them the most. Well, and I've talked about the tyranny of the save on my show that there was, there's too much managing to the save. And maybe you should start managing to, if you don't have a, uh, you know, a Rivera or a Lidge circa 2008 or a Koji Uohara circa 2013. If you don't have someone like that, don't act like you do. And maybe they should just always put in whoever the best matchup is, you know, as opposed to saying, well, you're our closer, so we have to go to you, which I just think is only works when you have, you know, you know, Eckersley or, you know, Billy Wagner or whatever great closer. They don't have that guy. So why act like you do? You yeah, know. Yankee fans were spoiled with Mo, had him for a really long time, and we're now 10 years removed. You know, right. his last season was 2013, and it's still like they expect someone to come in and act like him. And again, Holmes kind of did in the first half, and then he fell off. But, you know, Yankee fans are a little too zealous uh, about that stuff, and they expect things to work out the way I they want I also think that so. I'm not sure I would trust Boone to be the one to be always playing Tetris with the bullpen. Mm-mm. Um <laughs> now, I will give. I've, I've been. I've always been quick to trash Cashman. It's one of my favorite things to do. I will give management, whether it was Cashman or Hal, credit for breaking the piggy bank and keeping Judge. Uh, they did not sign Arson Judge, but they kept Aaron Judge. <laughs> and I, I obviously, if Judge left for San Francisco, then that is a Jenga piece because the rest of their offense is not that great. It's actually kind of ordinary if you remove Judge from that lineup. I mean, I mean, Car- Stanton is good, but he didn't have a great year last year. And, you know, you have good players, but you could not afford to lose 
a piece like that from his team. No, definitely not. But he wasn't going anywhere. Who the hell would yeah. leave New York for San Francisco? No offense to San Francisco, but <laughs> Judge is like a he's like a god around here, you know. Yeah. And I know he's from Northern California, but I joked about it over the winter when he was in that Peloton class before he got signed. I knew he wasn't going anywhere. His wife wasn't going to let him leave New York and Peloton. There was no way he was going to stay. Yeah, but th- didn't that kill Mr. Big though? Uh, yes, but Mr. Big is a lot older than Aaron Judge. There, He's there you you know, closer to our age. So, <laughs> Mark the time, my first Sex in the City reference I've ever made in Locked on MLB. It took five years, but I finally did it. Hey, the NCAA tournament is heating up. We're going to have the NBA playoffs soon. We're going to have Stanley Cup playoffs soon. This is one of the best times to be a sports watcher and to be putting some money down. There's no better place to get into the action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. That's because right now, FanDuel is giving new customers a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's $1,000 back in bonus bets if the first bet doesn't win. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on and sign up today to claim your no-sweat first bet. Then you can wager on anything from the money line to point spreads to which team will be cutting down the nets. It's all in an app that's safe and secure and super easy to use. So don't miss out on your chance for a no sweat first bet up to $1,000 when you join FanDuel today. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. Make every moment more with FanDuel. Twenty twenty one for the Red Sox was like, how is this team winning? This team isn't that good. And then that team of all teams got to uh game six of the ALCS with uh you know, just an absolute cut and paste team. And boy, Lauren, that seems like a long time ago, doesn't it? That wow, that was a the 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 Christian Vasquez walk off home run against the Rays. That seems like uh, was all black and white footage of, of Bobby Doerr. Um, it's a what's going on with the Red now. Sox? What's going on uh, with the Red Sox? That's the, that's the million dollar question. What's going on with the Red Sox? It's just all they'll spend, by the way, is a million dollars. So yeah, maybe one and a half, but we won't push our luck. But it's, it's a very interesting season going into 2023 because they could be competitive. A lot has to go right. For them, mm-hmm. for that to happen, everyone has to stay healthy, which already is an issue for the Red Sox right now. With they already have their is- injury issues, but there is, you know, there this could be a good lineup. This could be a solid pitcher rotation. I don't have worries about the bullpen for the first time in a very long time. The bullpen yeah. is probably the least of my worries going into this. Isn't season. that weird? <laughs> It is very that's weird. Just, that's surreal. And there's there's a closer in there that they hopefully will get to use in a proper position. The, the offense, it's looked good in spring training. And I say that as they come off an 11 nothing loss on Wednesday. But you see the potential there. And that's kind of been the theme of the offseason in spring training is we've seen the potential there. But it all has to just come together. And I don't know what happened last year. There was something. There was people were not on the same page. But – Maybe now with Devers locked up for the long term, you have some guys coming in here like Justin Turner, who's been on championship teams, who's a, a good clubhouse guy. And you have the promise to Kike Hernandez that this team will be better. Now, how much better? I don't know. But it's this is kind of this kind of has the makings of a 2013 or 2021 team where it's kind of just a, a bunch of guys. Yeah. Kind of just a bunch of dudes just hanging out, going to play baseball, and oh my God, they're going to end up being pretty good. But it's a long season. Kenley Jansen, I'm going to say it. He scares the tar out of me as a closer. They're just oh, happy God. to have a closer at this point. That's but also, true. what's what worries me about him is he's so slow. He works so slow in this pitch clock now, and he's he's acknowledged it. He's like, I'm staying behind. I'm not going to WBC so I can work on this pitch clock thing. It's been a problem for pitchers who aren't slow. And there'll be adjustments, yes, but I am – this is like – if this was Erod on the mound, I'd be like, oh, just just take the automatic strike, man. Like, you're not going to be ready in time. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm nervous about this team. Yes. I mean, like I also said in 2013, um, the year after the Bobby Valentine fiasco, I thought the Red Sox were going to be awful. So I've been wrong before. 
But let's, uh, hope, let's hope you're wrong again. I mean, I want to be wrong I, too. <laughs> I want to. I want to have fun this season. Yeah, last year was rough, but it was not rough in the land where they have the crab cakes and the wire. Locked on Orioles. Connor Newcomb finally had a podcast worth. Li- you always had a podcast worth listening to, but you finally had one where you got to hear happiness instead of yeah, locked on was- Eeyore, which you were the first couple of years you were here. Um, yeah, it, was it was a fast um, turnaround. Yeah. Yeah, it was, you know, I, I joked throughout the most of the 2021 season just because 2020 didn't have any minor leagues. I joked throughout the 2021 season. I was like, I may turn this into locked on Bowie Bay Sox or locked on <laughs> Aberdeen Ironbirds because literally what was happening in the minor leagues was the Orioles were putting together these young guys, these Gunner, who's this 19 year old kid, Gunnar Henderson, and this kid, Adley Rutschman and Grayson Rodriguez and, Look, they're here now, and the Orioles won 83 games a year after winning 52 games, one of the biggest jumps ever in baseball history. And, yeah, they didn't make the playoffs, but it was still almost as fun as a team making the playoffs just because of how unexpected it was. And it's nice to have optimism going into an Orioles season for the first time probably since – I mean, Manny Machado and the gang were still on the roster in 2017. Um, going into this year, uh, they, you know, Brandon Hyde still has a job. Um, what do they have to do? They have to, they have to build on this, right? They have to have it back to back good seasons, right? Yeah, I don't think they have to make the playoffs, and that's because you look around at the other teams that these hosts cover, and this might be the toughest division in baseball. So I don't necessarily think they have to make the playoffs, but you have to build on this. And even if you go 83 and 79 again, if a lot of the young guys show progress, you're in the hunt for most of the season, you take that as a positive. Now, if you win 73 games this year and you take a step back and guys who played well over their head last year come back down to earth in 2023, then you're looking at a different thing. Cause you mentioned, I mean, they, their plan was to raise the floor this off season. So instead of signing Carlos Rodon and Carlos Correa, they went after Kyle Gibson and Adam Frazier. It was more of the, Hey, these guys are big leaguers. And that's about what you can say about them. Those are the guys that the Orioles brought in. It made the floor a little bit higher if the young guys flamed out at some point. So Here? does that yeah. mean they're pro- maybe they're protecting against a potential 70 win season, but they certainly didn't do anything to take 83 wins to 90 wins. Now, moving over to uh, our, our dear friend, Kevin Weiss of Locked On Rays. The Rays, look at their offense in the postseason was Jose Siri which, of course, everyone predicted. Um, This was a team, they were so banged up when they played Cleveland in the wildcard series that I could not, I didn't recognize half the players on the team. And yet, with all that in mind, they won 86 games, they made the postseason, and a lot of the players who were part of the back-to-back wonderful years of 2020 and 2021, I think are, are, you know, they're coming back. you know, I can't count out the Rays. Tell me, tell me your thoughts. No, I, I agree with that sentiment. I think one of the issues for the Rays going forward is you mentioned the offense and they didn't really do too much to address that. I know that the fan base was really clamoring for a strong left-handed bat and the Rays used their money for contract extensions and bringing in Zach Eflin. So we'll see if um, they're, they're really banking on the young players and the rookies to step up offensively unless they have a trade, a midseason trade in mind that we don't know about to bring in a, a veteran slugger. But yeah, that's the thing is just getting back to health. I think hopefully crossing fingers that you get a full season from Brandon Lau, Wander Franco and um, and Manny Margot that um, you, you should be on the upswing. I think one of the bigger concerns, though, is you do lose a couple veteran players. I know that uh, Craig can attest to this. Kevin Kiermeyer is now in a Blue Jays uniform. Uh, Mike Zanino is no longer a part of the equation. So that might be a little bit of a challenge and a hurdle as well. But I think, um, you know, I, I think this team uh, is definitely – a playoff contender and, and playoff worthy. Um, but they've, they've got to be able to stay healthy and, and put a little bit more uh, runs on the board than they did last year. I think. Talk to me a little bit about the pitching staff and how they look going into the uh, going into this year. 
Yeah, it's strong. It's strong. It's probably a, a true one through five that the Rays can count on and rely upon. Of course, a little bit of an unfortunate injury uh, with Tyler Glass. Now he's going to miss probably the first month, month plus of the season. But luckily, uh, the Rays have pretty uh, easy schedule that first month. But um, if Glass now comes back into the fold, you have him, Shane McClanahan, Zach Eflin, Jeffrey Springs, Drew Rasmussen, and then back off after that you have a lot of depth with guys like Yanni Torino, Louis Patino and and Josh Fleming waiting in the wings and of course uh, like we know with Ray's bullpens it's a lot of guys who's this guy never heard of him where did he come from what's his deal you know career minor leaguer and, and they turn him into borderline all-stars I mean Jason um, Adam. there was yeah Jason Jason Adam. Adam. who the hell was Jason Adam going into that say then he was on he had an amazing season for them last year good question you can basically say that I mean year in year out for for half the bullpen who the hell is this guy but Jason Adam who had a terrific terrific season yet the race still want to go to arbitration because uh you know they like they like having those payrolls around 70 million dollars 75 million dollars but um and and that's the thing too is you know Jason Adam as good of a season he as he had he only had eight saves again this is also a team that does things in a non-traditional way of hey, we're not going to, if we can avoid it, of, of naming that de facto closer. We're going to to spread the work around a little bit, if you will. I mean, it wasn't too long ago where I think they set some sort of awkward record of you know, 12, 13, 14 guys uh, garnering a save. So that could very much be a similar situation where Jason Adam gets a lot of save opportunities and Pete Fairbanks, who also got a uh, contract extension, gets uh, some save opportunities as well. All right, let's take a minute to talk about the ultimate baseball GM. My whole life, I've wanted to run my own team, and I used to do it with baseball cards and Stratomatic and video games and fantasy baseball, but nothing is easier, more fun, and more thorough than doing the ultimate baseball GM. And I love our new partner and the sponsor today's episode. My team, they're the Honolulu Waves. And we're off to a rough start right now. I didn't do the best job of putting together my team, but I got players in the minor leagues. You can call them up. Honolulu's going to win this. And that's the deal. You can create your own team, managing your own professional franchise for baseball, and it's a dream come true. All the aspects of running a team, hiring the right coaches, hiring the right staff, managing the team's finances, scouting, drafting players, managing those difficult personalities. huh? And you can navigate your franchise, mine's the Honolulu Waves, through free agency and the ups and downs of the season. All this in a challenging and realistic game world. Ultimate Baseball GM is completely free and playable online, on the go. Play as you want and whenever you want to. And now, Locked On MLB listeners get a 100% free boost to their franchise when using the promo code Locked On in the game store. The Waves need that. So make sure to check it out. To download the game, just visit probaseballgm.com, scan the code, or look it up in the app store. That's probaseballgm.com, Ultimate Baseball GM. Start your dynasty today. Hey, uh, welcome to the Locked On MLB family, to Craig Ballard, our new host of Locked On Toronto Blue Jays. Now, everybody in their moose seemed to be picking the Blue Jays last year. I picked them to win the pennant. Uh, You know, a lot of things went wrong for the Toronto Blue Jays, including that leading to the firing of the manager and a lackluster start and all that stuff. Everything went wrong, wrong, wrong. And they still won 92 games. They still made the postseason and hosted the wild card round, which is another reason why, look at if some of the, I'll just say, you, Craig, I'll let you take over, but I, I think if some of the players who didn't play up to the back of their baseball cards last year play to the, the expectations we thought they were going to they were fantastic the second half of the season and uh i can't automatic you know this is a a team that if you pick them to win division i don't think it's a bad bet part of me is going to be stunned if they don't win the division but i'll tell you i will always 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 as a longtime toronto blue jay fan always defer to the Tampa Bay Rays. I will believe the Toronto Blue Jays will finish ahead in the standings of the Tampa Bay Rays when I see it. Now, I saw it last year, but in the last 15 years, that was just the second 
dang time that the Blue Jays uh, even had a, a, a sorry in the last 15 years the Jays have only had two winning seasons against Tampa it's been complete domination so I love the Blue Jay roster the the, the depth that has been brought in this team never had left-handed batters Kevin Kiermaier just walked in the door Brandon Bell just walked in the door Dalton Varsho just walked in the door like the, the Blue Jay the 2023 Toronto Blue Jays will be amongst league leaders for most different lineups used and the other teams that are that are on that list will be using all these other lineups out of necessity, a bit of injuries and things like that. From the Blue Jays, it's going to be because the depth is just absolutely legit. You, you talk about the firing of the manager. I'm not a huge Sean Schneider fan, but I'm very definitely a Donnie Baseball, Don Mattingly fan. He has also just walked in the door. So from a culture standpoint, all kinds of changes have taken place. You mentioned this is a 92-win team from a year ago well, with the – with that unbalanced schedule gone, that's six less games against Tampa. Yes, please and thank you. But it's also that 92-win Blue Jay team from last season, zero game. Washington Nationals, cellar dweller. Uh, Miami Marlins, cellar dweller. Colorado Rockies, Arizona Diamondbacks, four terrible teams that the 92-win 20, uh, 2022 Toronto Blue Jays had zero games against this season. A dozen, a dozen, just by showing up for these games on time, that should be an eight and four record. If you catch a break here and there, that should be a nine and three or a 10 and two. So I very much think that the Toronto Blue Jays are going to be massive. I'm absolutely guaranteeing they're making the playoffs. This I'll absolutely guarantee that. I think they're going to be in the mix for the division uh, as well. I've agreed with a lot of the things the other people have said as well. I, I think this Yankee lineup five through nine is, is deplorable. Uh, I have zero faith in your Boston Red Sox. I'm so sorry to say. Uh, I, I think Connor was right on the money with with what he said about Baltimore as well. And and, and Kevin, Kevin, your followers alone are, seem to me like they're triple what what the Tampa Bay fan base is. Like, I I just can't even believe how well your show does. You, you absolutely knock it out of the park. But Kevin, uh, I will be talking to you quite a few times this year, and many times I'll be asking you for mercy because the Tampa Bay Rays own the Toronto Blue Jays. Well, and I, I got to say one thing you, you mentioned quickly, you know, Teoscar Hernandez was dealt to Seattle to bolster their bullpen, which we all kind of saw. They need a little bullpen help in, uh, in uh, that final game against the, the Mariners. <laughs> but uh, you mentioned quickly Varsho. I think Varsho, like sometimes like the best deal of the offseason isn't the big splashy deal. I think Varsho, who was with, Arizona, so a grand total of one person, you know, uh, you know, saw who, you know, knew who he was with with the D backs, um, but the uh, I think he's going to fit in perfectly in the Toronto lineup. I think he's going to have great production in Toronto, and where he's not going to have the pressure of being the guy there. the The X factor for Toronto is getting Vladdy Guerrero back to being the. Uh, uh, you know, to being the MVP. And this goes back to a little bit of what I was saying to Stacy about uh, last year's Yankee team. You know, they had players like Kikuchi and um, uh, Jose Barrios having terrible seasons last year. Where they, and if they have some of the people who had bad seasons just be mediocre this year, that in itself is an improvement and could improve a team to 90, from 92 wins. Well, and I'm right there with you with uh, Slim Daddy Vlad. I call Vladimir, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Slim Daddy Vladdy. I'm right there with you on Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Uh, th this is a conversation that I think a lot of the Blue Jay fan base just, just don't want to have because we love Vlad so much. He's already one of my favorite Blue Jays of all time. He had 274 last season. That's completely unacceptable. That's completely unacceptable. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. led baseball in double plays, in hitting into double plays. Make that make sense to me. This should be a home run machine. He regressed to a ground ball machine right before our very eyes. And Sully, he was engaging in the little reindeer games that the pitchers were, were playing. He was swinging at pitchers' pitches time and time again. He was unacceptable last season. Hey, uh, I'm going to go around the horn quickly, uh, give everyone uh, a chance to tell me where you think your team is going to finish and what player on your team you think is going to be a positive surprise on your team, starting with Lauren of Locked On Red Sox, where the Sox going to end up and who on the team is going to make us go, ah, oh, look at that. Uh, I think they're going to be fourth in the AL East. I'm not, I'm not going to be too high on them, but – and as a surprise, I think Alex Verdugo, I think this is a big season for him. I think last year he had some injuries he dealt with, and he's always going to be seen as that 
that's centerpiece for the Mookie trade. And he's never going to be on Mookie's level, and that's fine. But I think this is going to be kind of a breakout season for him, and people are starting or start going to be like, oh, okay, like he can be a serviceable player to the Red Sox. He'll never be Mookie, and that's okay. But he can be a serviceable uh, outfielder and offensive bat for this lineup, and they certainly need that this year. So I'm keeping my eyes on him this year. Yep, and he is a former Dodger, so he fits right he in is. with the current <laughs> rebuilding plan of the Red Sox here. I I don't want him to be Mookie. Just c- can you be Mike Greenwell? I mean, like, at some point, it's like the, 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 you want to just sort of get, can you at least be Troy O'Leary? Uh, Connor Newcomb locked on Orioles. Where do you think the O's are going to end up? And who's one player you think is going to be a positive surprise on the team? Well, I guess Lauren and I are going to disagree on the standings because I'll go fourth for the Orioles above Boston again. Um, and, and you know, there's going to be a lot of positives, I think, because a lot of young guys are playing their first full seasons. But uh, Kyle Bradish, I think, by the end of this year, the Orioles currently do not have an ace. They still have not named an opening day starter because they do not have a anything close to an ace. I mean, John Means is injured. That's some of that reason. But by the end of this year, Kyle Bradish will be going into 2024. He's going to be the guy where you look at and say, you know what? He can start opening day, and we feel good about that next season. Kevin Weiss of Locked On Rays. Tell people where you think the Rays are going to end up and who should we look at as a surprise? I think the Rays will finish second in the division, and as far as a surprise, I'll go with uh, Jose Siri. The the tools just uh, salivate over, and uh, Kevin Cash basically said in the offseason, hey, you're you're the man, you're you're the guy, you're a center fielder of the future. And, and I'll go a step further and say he will actually finish with a higher war this season than Kevin Kiermeyer with the Blue Jays. Oh, that's his fighting words. You're going to take that? Uh, Stacey oh, Gonsoulias of Locked On Yankees. What, where do you think the Yankees are going to finish and who is going to be a positive surprise on the team? Uh, second. Sorry, Kevin. And I think Clark Schmidt's going to be the surprise. I think that he might do better than people expect and that he might end up like the number four starter behind Cole Rodon and Cortez. Like, I feel like he might even leapfrog Luis Severino at this point. I don't know. It's just a feeling I have. Uh, Craig Ballard of Locked on Toronto Blue Jays. Where do you think the Blue Jays are going to finish and who's going to surprise us on that team? Uh, Blue Jays will finish second to the Tampa Bay Rays. And uh, the surprise, uh, I, the, the, the one player I don't think the fan base has wrapped their head around because he's so new to the Blue Jay fan base, but Whit Merrifield, the, the versatility. Yeah. Shapiro and Atkins, honestly, it's tw- it's 20 deep, the, the amount of names I could rhyme off for you right now for time, I won't. But they have tried to find their own, you know, poor man's Whit Merrifield, their entire regime here. Now they have the actual Whit Merrifield. The, the Blue Jays were linked to every fourth outfielder that was available this offseason. They didn't even offer a contract to any of them because I think they think Whit Merrifield is that fourth outfielder and he's their starting second baseman as well. So I'm going to go second place behind the Rays and Whit Merrifield. Well, here's my prediction. Uh, sorry, Lauren. I think the Sox are in the cellar. Uh, I think the Orioles are going to be at an even 500. And I think three games are going to separate the Yankees the Rays, and the Blue Jays. I think it's going to be a razor-tight final week. Uh, I'm leaning towards the Yankees to win the division, uh, and I think the Blue Jays will be second one game back, and the Rays will be third two games back. But, again, it's it's, it's coin toss time between those three teams for me. So there you go. I'm going to go with the Yankees because I know it upsets Stacey because she thinks I just cursed them. Sully, the last two weeks of the season are all those three teams against each other. So it's going to be great. Ooh, it's going right? to be great. Even Chris Mad Dog Russo will approve of it. Oh, um, no. <laughs> all right. Going down the line. Check out Lauren of Locked On Red Sox. Check them out wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Same with Connor Newcomb of Locked On Orioles. Kevin Weiss, who is Ulysses Sombrano. You didn't kick him out, right? He's still your co-host, right? He is still my co-host. Yeah, we're, co-host. we're switching off uh, responsibilities here. There's and there. not a coup d'etat that happened right there. No. It's like Salino and Barnes and suddenly the Barnes firm. What? And uh, Stacey Gotsoulias, you're at Stace Gots at on Twitter, but you're at Lockdown Yankees and you're 
crushing it. Great videos with, with uh, and my new favorite thumbnails. I love your the artistic uh, eye catching thumbnails. But check out the great show. And uh, Craig Ballard, brand new. Welcome to the family. The brand new host of the Locked On Toronto Blue Jays podcast. Thanks so much for being part of the Locked On MLB AL East season preview for 2023. I am your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. Please, I'm on my knees. I'm begging you to call me Sully. You are locked on MLB. Your daily MLB podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day.